really hard. The first day I came here, I told my family I want to go back. I'm done. I don't want to do it. And I was like beyond terrified the first day of school. I grew up in Westchester, Ohio. So my home school is Lakota West. I've gone there my whole life. I was terrified to go to Beller Tech. A couple people were like, don't do music. There's no, there's no jobs in music. That happened for sure. Well, I had a friend named Cody who went here a couple years ago, graduated like two years ago. He played drums, so he did like the same program. And that was what I wanted to do. I wanted to go play music because that would have given me something to like be excited about. My sister does web design and she went to Butler Tech first. I want to be an animator when I grow up. So when I saw that graphic design could lead me to my animation path, I was like, I have to do this. I had to realize, I kept telling myself, I was like, everyone is in this with you. Like, nobody's coming here with their people they've been going to school with for a long time. Everybody chose to come here. It was a choice you didn't have to come. It builds you in a different way than a regular school does. That was one of my biggest things, the reason why I came here, because I'm still getting done what I have to in school. I can still graduate with a diploma, but I'm also getting all this real world help which I would have never got that at my home school. It's so cool. I feel like I played on stage this morning for people. Lucky to do stuff like that all the time. I love it. Some students come to escape out of frustration for the system that they've been in. We talk a lot about what is your why. They're looking for an opportunity to discover their why. What is it they want to do? Why do they want to do it? And how does it connect their, their head and their heart to what it is that they believe is their purpose in life? When you come here and you apply for Butler Tech, we don't look at grades. We don't look at discipline data of our students. Really what we look for is, do you have the grit and tenacity and do you desire it? And that for us is a greater sign of intelligence and a greater predictor of success in Butler Tech than grades or discipline data or attendance rates, any of those factors that the system defines as success or failure. So basically this is Ife right here and this is going to be her little brother, Seye, Naoki Watanabe. These are the enemies. Bridget Duval and Maria Gonzalez. Sassy and they're really mean. You start at the side, you go to the quarter view, and then you go to the front because you're showing your character turning from the side to the front. Mm -hmm. So you want to show them in different angles so I have a reference on how to do it. I feel like the diversity we have in shows is not nearly enough. I'm so sick and tired of all these reboots. Everything's rebooted, and I feel like that's killing creativity. I want to see something new. I want to see diversity, and like, I want people to see that they are important. I want people to see their race in a way that they've never seen them before. I've never done like full-fledged animation yet, but I have been like definitely drawn them on paper about how I want it to go, but I haven't fully committed to finishing it. But I'm like coloring, ugh. Drawing the comic is the easy part and then getting to move is the hard part. My awesome goal for animation this year is make an animation that is fully three minutes by myself colored, at least base colors, and has a vision. I keep telling myself I can do it. to be 
an adult. Uh, you know, typically we define that by success and we define that by financial success in America. This generation of students, they are discovering for themselves what it means to be successful. I think a lot of times we tell students to chase success. More often, I think we ought to be telling students to find significance for what it is that they do. Today we wrote our 30 second elevator speech. That's a plus. So, we have a PowerPoint. It's like a little picture and it's like an ear with the line through it, so it's like the universal symbol for death. And then I'm gonna say that, and then we're gonna click the slide and it's gonna be like, Jim Proof hearing aids. <laughs> Quavo, stop taking a video of me. <laughs> so sophomore year, I took ASL and I fell in love with the language. I'm highly involved in the deaf community. But I want to be an ENT when I grow up and then I want to specialize in cochlear implant surgeries. My partner and I are making a gym proof hearing aid because like you don't think about it, but like if you get sweaty, that hearing aid just like plops right off and you can't hear anything. My goal this year is to hopefully get a prototype by like middle of the year of my hearing aid. Have somebody realize the potential our design has to see it be used and help people. So we have one and I took like silicone and like molded it on the back of the um, hearing aid and it stayed on, which is like freaking fantastic because that's the whole goal. And then Gabe's making like a prototype of like a wire that'll come and like wrap around the ear. He hasn't created it yet, but he's gonna test that this week since we have to present this Thursday. <laughs> Mr. Anderson, he's taught me a lot of things over the past year. I mean, he, he's usually working on three, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollar jobs, so he knows what it takes to get out there and sell in big jobs and draw them up. I always did a couple jobs here and there on my own, but most of the time I was just working for my dad. And my dad's always owned his own thing, so like the beginning of last year was like the time when I finally just said it's time to go on my own and just took it and ran with it. Right now, we're doing a lot of lawn maintenance, we're doing about 75 yards a week. From here on out, I want to try to stay more out of the lawn maintenance. I don't want to do that no more, really. I mean, I've been doing it since I was eight years old. It's just kind of getting to the point where, especially with being here at Butler Tech, like, I've learned so many more things that I feel like I can go make a lot more money in. And I want to be in tree work, I want to be in fertilization and everything, which I want to do everything right from the start. And, I would say my five-year goal is making a quarter to a half a million dollars. Send a crew out to go mow and I can go work on landscaping. I want to be moved out of my parents' house by then and be out on my own and hopefully have a shop and everything, if not just a house with a garage and everything like that. I just don't think that a school should be somewhere where you go and sit in the classroom all day and learn the same repetitive things over and over again. At Butler Tech, it's more like a one-on-one -on -one experience, so you get to build a relationship with your teachers that help you out with other things other than just school. I just saw a better opportunity here. I could go to school and still do something I love every day. On Saturday, we're going to Hamilton and we're going to play Operation Pumpkin. We're going to do a flash mob version of I've Got a Feeling by the Black Eyed Peas. I'm excited. I like, I like being able to go out and perform, yeah. This is the first rehearsal with like the dancers because I've done it with 
like the vocalist and stuff. This was the first like full rehearsal of it. If you're not smiling and not moving, it looks like you're miserable. You gotta move. How about this? One, two, seven. That's what ZZ Top would do. You know who that is? ZZ Top. They would be playing, looking like they were completely disconnected from each other, and then all of a sudden, both of them would go like that, perfectly the same. And the audience goes wild. Because, you know, what's the pain? It was really hard for me to play instruments in front of people at first, but then I just did it and it got really, I got a lot easier after I did it the first time. I've stuck in front of like, my friends and stuff, but not like, a, like an audience really. I've never done that. I really want to write and like record and like put out a whole EP like this year because I've been thinking about it for like a really long time. I like doubt a lot of my own like decisions and stuff with music. I think that might be like one of the hardest parts is like trying to convince myself that what I'm doing is good and people hopefully like it. It, it generally would be an expectation when they get into the business world that what you know and how you grow as an employee and how you get better and how you make your organization better is that you need to share the information, you need to share your knowledge and understanding, and you need to learn about how you learned. We do want them to experience failure. It is a part of the learning process. It's a part of growing and developing, wanting to grow and develop in, in what it is that you want to do for the rest of your life. You have to experience failure. If you haven't experienced failure before, you really haven't gone beyond what you thought your limits were. That is basically what the Student Showcase is about. Um, I'm really excited and nervous at the same time. Like, what are people gonna say? What people don't like it, what are people gonna say about it? The Student Showcase was an idea generated through a visit we went to High Tech High and we saw them do a, a Student Showcase and so part of the growth and transformation for them is to understand that we want them to share what it is that they've learned. So we're at Showcase, it's 6.09. I have been here all day. It's always a bit of like adrenaline rush. It's kind of like coming down from it. It's super stressful for me personally. 
Like, what are people gonna say? What are people gonna like it? What are people gonna say about it? Awesome, 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 awesome. Sorry. No, it's fine. <laughs> what is it? How are we say what? So we're at the fall showcase. Um, I'm kind of nervous to present. And we have people here to like approve our patent. Um, <laughs> but I'm really excited and nervous at the same time. But it's gonna be good. We've been practicing all day. And yeah, basically locked ourselves in the closet since like 10 o'clock and have been running through it again and again. So I'm gonna like recite it in my sleep. But it's okay, because it's gonna be good. <laughs> So one in every 20 Americans has been diagnosed with a hearing impairment, and most of the people focus on updating technology or coming up with new designs to be more practical in everyday life. But what they ignore is fixes that hearing people don't often realize are a problem, such as the inability to work out with a hearing aid on due to the fact that it slips when one gets sweaty. And so what we did is we took a silicone gel and molded it behind the hearing aid so that when you put it on, the silicone would stick to like the inside of your ear and like the part of your head that the hearing aid would sit on. And for stickability, like, I can say I personally tested it. It was a very tedious workout. I did box jumps and wall balls and it did not go anywhere. And I accidentally wore it in the shower because I forgot I had it on. So it is shower approved too. Not that hearing aids are waterproof, but it did not go anywhere. How did you guys come up with this idea? Um, it was actually, gotta give credit where credit's due. It was a Fisher's idea. Cause Fisher is 100% deaf in her left ear and only has like 40% hearing in her right ear. And she wears hearing aids that look exactly like this every day, but she doesn't wear them at school cause they cause feedback and she can't wear them when she participates in CrossFit because they slip out and she can't hear anything. And with everything like Gabe said, that's going on in the gym. It's very hard for her to focus on specific things. So she brought the idea to us and we decided to hit the ground running. So, yeah. I just want I mean, that's a lot of information you've put together and some great ideas. I can't wait to see I know. F Fisher's like, when do you have the real deal? I need it. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm I was nervous and Gabe was nervous, but Gabe, he didn't like the public speaking aspect of it and I didn't like what I had to present because I didn't feel like it was my best work. I feel like a lot of people responded very well. All of this is just because like my teachers sat there and they saw something that had potential and then all of them were like, well, we, why don't we do something for them? Like we can easily help them and move this along. You don't get that a lot of places where teachers see something. Like, yeah, they'll encourage you, but like my teacher emailed the hospital and got me in. To, I spent 10 hours with Dr. Sami walking around watching surgeries. Like that doesn't happen anywhere. <laughs> I think they're really into it. Excited to do it again. It's cool though. You know, I'm happy how it turned out. It was a lot of fun. As an entertainer, you always deal with uh, nervousness and anxiety before going on stage. The only way to really overcome that nervousness is by doing it. You have to get into that music, and he's learning, he's getting there. You know, this isn't a science fair. It's not, you're gonna get a great, excellent, distinct, you know, that wasn't about that. It was about doing it, doing the actionable item and learning what you learned during the showcase. We had a student that was in a program and they were struggling through their showcase. The student froze, and there was this, you know, awkward 
30 to 45 seconds of nothing. And there's a public audience there, there's businesses there. And then a, another student came out of the audience and put their arm around that student and told them, you can do this. At the end of it, we asked the, the young lady who came to help the student, did you know him? I just knew that I was a theater student and it never bothered me to do any of this. And I knew that he needed help. That's, that's why we do showcases. I've seen so much tremendous growth in him. And at our school, we, we push performance. You have to look like you're enjoying it. You have to look comfortable on stage, get into the music, and let the music move you. Thinking about it, the more I just kind of get mad. I don't really know what to say. I feel like just the same thing everyone thinks. Like, you know, I'm kind of nervous. Like, what's going to happen when we see each other again? Side of the local hospital. Like, do I raise the possibility today? Concerns about the deadly coronavirus officially hitting the U.S. Here's what we know. A Washington state resident fell ill after returning from Wuhan, China. Chinese officials taking every precaution to contain the virus. Workers outside of the local hospital in bio suits. Officials screening travelers as they enter and leave the airport. So we started the year in August and we built our plan for fifth day experience. set to go, second semester, we're launching it, and all of a sudden, late January, we started to hear COVID-19. At first, Ohio children were to stay out of the classroom and focus on virtual learning until April 6th. Now, it's May 1st. My Corrine school closed first, and then Butler Tech, everything closed. And at first it was about three weeks, and then it was a month, and I was so shocked. It started to get worse, because like at first there was no stay at home order or anything. So, and then like that happened like two days later, and it just started getting like crazier and crazier, and school kept getting pushed back farther. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine raised the possibility today that K through 12 students might not return to in-person classes at all this school year. When you put a lot of kids in just in one classroom. You've got many, many families represented. So if one brings in the, the virus, then that could go out to every kid in that classroom and then that goes back to all those families. With about two days notice, we were informed, you can no longer see your students on your campuses, but continue to educate them. When it first came up, I was pretty scared about it all and wondering what in the world was going to happen because nobody's ever seen this kind of thing. And I don't know. I just really hope our country can fight it and like overcome it because I'm sick of this already. Teachers don't go into the profession to find financial success. If they do, uh, they, they definitely uh, did not find the right path to go down. There's an intrinsic value you get out of being a teacher in seeing your students exceed their own expectations for what they think they can be. And then to see your students struggle and not be able to be face-to-face -face with them, it, it takes an emotional toll. 
on your teachers. There, our teachers were emotionally fatigued as a result of the pandemic because you felt the skills that you had at, at being personal with your students and inspiring and motivating them in the classroom and, and encouraging them was limited to a, to a Zoom call. And so really, we took it as a challenge and said, okay, we've got two days. And one of the great things that the state did was they relaxed a lot of those mandates that perpetuate that old traditional education system. And so uh, we were lucky enough that we've been utilizing online learning and one-to-one -one laptops since 2005. So we were probably in a much better place to be able to adapt and shift than most other school districts. I also think that it has highlighted, in some respects, the tremendous burden on our public education system. Many of our school districts were left to figure out how to feed students and families. You know, at Butler Tech, sometimes we were the only laptop for the whole family. And that they were sharing that laptop in order to educate every member of that family. But I think we also learned a lot about the culture and organization of Butler Tech. I'm just taking everything home because we have to like clean our things because of the coronavirus that happened. So just just retrieving all of our stuff. Trying to get like every like art project I really liked and like take it home or everything that I printed out. Because if I knew we were going to be going home, I would have probably printed out more than I did. But I'm okay with this for now. I'm a really affectionate person, so like, I love hugging my friends, I love being around them. Hi, Zach. Oh. <laughs> Bro, I missed you. I missed you so much. I missed you so much. Having to go from being around your family all the time, hugging everybody, to being like, oh, you can't touch me, you can't be next to me, it was kind of like sad. Cause I'm just not used to that. And my mom had to tell me like, Angel, you, you've got to stop hugging people. You have to stop that. I didn't really think that it would change things the way that it did. And I rethought like becoming an animator because I saw like how so many artists were struggling during this time. But the more I keep doing my own art, I realize that no matter how hard things might get, like this is my passion and I'm not gonna give up on it. Some days I have these like bursts, random bursts of passion while I'll be animating and it looks great and I think this is awesome because that would happen last Thursday and then I took a couple breaks and I was drawing some stuff, just, just taking a break and then I got behind. I actually do have to make a schedule. I have to be sit down and have to do like how many frames per minute, how many frames for this, how many frames for that and just really crank it out because I have a tendency to be procrastinate, be overwhelmed with work, and then get even more behind because of stress. Kinda have to get better at animating. It's not something that I can just like snagnate or like plateau or just like, okay, I'm kind of okay. I kinda have to work at things if I'm gonna get better at it. If I wanna make this career, I have to do it and obviously practice makes perfect. When I make my characters, I kinda have a lot of aspirations for them. I just want them to be so much more because there's nothing good about seeing representation. 
Like a lot of characters in shows are just white, so why can't we have a show that's predominantly black? You have shows that are predominantly white all the time. That's what I want to do. I want to see myself in animation, and it just makes me so mad sometimes. It just doesn't make any sense. You don't know how it feels because you're not me. There's not one culture better than another culture. Your education system is made up of a predominantly white culture. It is inherently going to create some results that are negative for people of color. Now, what I contend is that that system doesn't work for anybody anymore. If you go into it, if I go into designing and building an education system based upon my own experiences, I'm going to build a system that works for me because I think that's what the right way is. And until you truly have student voice and you have a diverse group of voices saying what the system should look like and be, it will work for those that have designed the system. And if you don't have a broad representation, of cultures, of socioeconomic status, of a variety of different backgrounds, unless you have that sort of broad perspective and people being able to share in the design, you're gonna to continue to get the results we get. Which is why it's so important for us to know and understand the perspectives of our students and the culture of our students and their experience up to the point in which they arrive to us. I think because of the coronavirus and the way that things are and having to be locked in my house, a lot of like lonely feelings are kind of like leaking their way into the songs I'm writing right now more than I think they did before. If anything, this is gonna sound weird, but it actually made, this made it a lot easier, a lot easier for me. And now that I pretty much have nothing to do but that, it's made it 10 times easier than it ever has been. And I've gotten more done now than I ever have. And I think I've gotten my best stuff done now versus before this. It's like a weird thing, but it, I've, it's been easier for me now to do at least all the online stuff and the actual recording than it was before. It was like super hard to get do an EP at first because like when Monona came out, I was like writing on a couple songs then and I was trying to make an EP, but then I ditched all of them except that one. And then when I put out Day Waste, I did the same thing. There was like a couple songs, I ditched all of them, but that one. And then Teenage Sunflower did the same thing, only kept that one. And Day Waste, it's a bunch of single note stuff. Like I didn't play any chords in that song. Like even the rhythm part, it's all single notes. And like I released it, it rose a little bit quicker than Monona did at first. And I started like sending it to different like blogs and stuff. And like people were like writing about it. And then someone added me to this playlist that had like like 8,000 followers on the playlist. And I started getting like a bunch of like streams from there. After like, like three weeks, I got like a thousand streams total. And then I ended up, after, like right after that, I got put on to, I got on Discover Weekly. I got like, like 6,000 streams from that. It was crazy, because I didn't think it would blow up. Like, I thought it would get, like, some streams. Like, I thought it would get more than Winona did, but I wasn't expecting it to do that at all. Like, when it hit 10K, I was like, if it stops here, like, that's fine. Like, I was like, I thought that was as big as it was, like, ever going to get. It hit 100K last week, so it was crazy. I'm definitely I'm super proud of myself because I didn't really think it would happen to the extent that it did. I think one of the beauties that I have discovered about this generation of students is that they are discovering for themselves what it means to be successful. I'm sure, you know, the self-sustaining and finding jobs and finding financial success may be something that has been imposed upon them throughout their lifetime. And, and is, is relatively important is what we do as, as educators is make sure they have sustainability of, of employment. So I, I would say that's a progression into adulthood. But how many times do adults go to high school, go off to college, 
start their career to figure out six months from now not what they want to do. Well, are they an adult? Have they become an adult yet? And then three years later, they switch their vocation and do something else. Well, have they become an adult yet? I think a lot of times we tell students to chase success. And more often, I think we ought to be telling students to, to find significance for what it is that they do. Students don't necessarily understand what it means to be an adult because I'm not sure that our society understands what it means to be an adult as well. I realized the more and more I did hearing aid stuff that it would be a lot harder to get a working prototype with everything I wanted within the eight month time frame I gave myself. First it started out as our showcase idea and then we took it to HOSA which is like the Health Occupational Students of America and that's what this board came from is the HOSA because we, were, we went in a medical innovations thing and they were basically like if you win you could get some money to start your own innovation. So we had to tell them like why it was important because the why really matters when you're selling something because you can't just be like well I think people with hearing aids need this and they're going to be like okay cool why do they need that. I felt like that went a lot faster because we don't have a lot of information. It's very like straightforward, like this is what we did, this is why we did it. And the first one we did, it had to be 10 minutes because that was the school requirements. But the second one, we had to keep it under seven, which I felt was like a lot easier to do. And it was just Gabe and I and the judges in the room and we actually played second at that competition. So that was pretty cool. We definitely like, we worked better together and we like, it was very like professionally presented. By the time I get out of college, if I have a working prototype, I'd be happy because that's a lot of like technical issues that I have like so much to learn about. I definitely don't have a working prototype, but I've made strides there. So I feel like I haven't failed completely. It's just, it's a lot and there's like, well, I feel like there's a lot going on in general right now. I mean, like, I don't really have a side. Like, I'm not like, I think we should all like heavily protect ourselves and stay quarantined, but I'm also not. Like, I don't think we should go out and live life like we should. So I'm just, it's very confusing. And I want it to be over with, because I start college in a month and I don't want to have to social distance anymore. We've been working 12, 14 hour days for the past two months, maybe a day off here and there, but for the most part, it's just all work. The whole coronavirus thing, um, through, through it all, we didn't really lose nothing. We actually probably picked up a little bit more work than what we were gonna have because of the whole situation with the government giving you out money and extra money on unemployment and stuff like that. I thought it was always gonna slow down and everything, but it actually picked up and unexpectedly, but we're getting used to it and doing what we can. It, I mean, it really hasn't affected me that much. I mean, it didn't, didn't change my life that much. You just gotta go on with your life and do what you can. I definitely feel like I was more prepared than I would have been at a traditional high school because we, we've learned like just a variety of different things. They give you like your own responsibilities, your own ability to do what you want. It's more set up more like a college where a sense of responsibility and stuff like that. So I'm just thankful for the opportunity to even go to the school. My two to five year goal would be to make a quarter to half a million dollars a year. We're definitely not going to hit that point this year. Uh, so I think that's coming within the next year or two when we get into bigger installs and stuff like that. You just got to find what you like to do. If you, if you don't like it, you're going to hate it. I mean, that's, it's as simple as that. As long as you find something you love to do, it'll never work. We trusted our teachers and said, do what you can to help your students. And it, it doesn't necessarily mean about the content of what you're teaching. It may mean you just need to hear their frustration or their struggle at home as a result of now them increasing their hours or now them being the breadwinner of the home. 
I think it, it allowed us to tap into why we went into education a little bit deeper. You know, do everything you can to continue to teach content, but it is equally as important that you continue to connect with your students at a, at a personal level. You know, the, the, the true test of a culture of an organization is during a crisis. And they will either rise to the occasion or they will fragment and fall apart and dismantle. But if you've got a really healthy culture and organization prior to a crisis, your culture will respond exponentially. I guess we're having final goodbye to Butler Tech for our senior year and it's kind of fun because I've never been one for like sitting still and quiet for long periods of time so we had a lot of fun like decorating my car today yeah it's a different feel to it and different look yeah I, I kind of like it a little more in terms of like my personality I'm enjoying this <laughs> and I know my mom was just excited that we were doing something like I decorated my car we have a lot of balloons sticking out we painted the sides of it so like it's fun you get to decorate your car and your graduation my plans have not changed. I'm going to Miami University for kinesiology pre-med. Pretty excited, can't wait. And once I get my farm tech certification from here, I'll get moved to the pharmacy, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> Butler Tech is awesome. I keep telling all like the sophomores I know, like, you should go, it's really great. Everybody around here made me who I am. It's definitely weird just to come back for one last time and seeing everybody for the last time until I'll eventually come back, but. This is it for now. There's different strategies for how you go about creating the education revolution. You can try to change it within the system, create a brand new model altogether, or you can be the saboteur. And we like to kind of count ourselves as the saboteur. So we're going to embed things within the existing system that intentionally breaks down those traditional structures of the assembly line model of education. Not only providing students with voice, which is a complete change in the way and the philosophy of, of educating students. And, you know, most times it's students are to be quiet and listen and the teacher expounds upon their knowledge and understanding and the students repeat it. It was intentional to disrupt the traditional calendar. It was intentional to disrupt the traditional school day and it was absolutely intentional to give students more voice and control of their learning. And so that was an attempt, if you can coin the term of sabotage in a positive light, you're saying the system doesn't work for over a million students who drop out. They're not finding their passion. They're not finding their purpose. And so we need to embed something that is a catalyst for a transformational or a third order change which I feel is necessary in our U.S. education system because if we don't, there are economic and political consequences for not creating a citizenry that is that kind of thoughtful, engaging person. The death of the American public education system is at stake, and the consequences of that can be catastrophic for the nation. It can be catastrophic.